just want to share a a uh, word of exhortation to you. We're going to talk about staying strong in the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are many times faced with many situations and we understand the shift and the changes that are taking place in our nation right now. And we as believers are going to have to stay strong in the Lord. A lot of things are being exposed right now. We are beginning to see things that have been taking place behind the scenes that are coming to the forefront. We're, we're, we're not ignorant of the enemy's attempts, uh, his uh, devices. Uh, I, uh, I know that if you keep up with anything, I know some of you probably prefer to just turn it off, but I like to see what the enemy is doing. So I, I watch several things and I know this message is really strong for the church today because we are going and we are under and we're going to go under a time of persecution like we have never experienced before. But we're not afraid of persecution because the greater one lives in us. Isn't that true? You know, uh, uh, some of the signs that we're starting to get, you know, I, I believe that many of you probably have gotten this as well. There is a census report that has been sent out uh, uh, through the uh, uh, Commerce Department and uh, requiring and wanting to know about your household. Uh, have you got it? Have you seen it? You will. And in the census, not only did they send it out to you, but they are also calling you to make sure you got it. Now, the thing that really registers with me, the questions that are being asked on that census report, uh, are, are somewhat revealing of the intrusion of the privacy that we have enjoyed in our nation. And also it is reflective. And I know that people will say, well, y'all, you know, you are just a conspiracy nut. Well, you, in the days to come, you're going to be glad somebody told you. Uh, I, I'm just sharing with you. And yeah, because for one thing, for, for this big matter, uh, how many of y'all know that if you're the one that's paying for your utilities, it ain't nobody's business on what you're paying? Amen. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, they ain't sending me no check. They help me pay my utility payment. And uh, there's a form letter in it saying that this is going to be able to help the, the uh, congressmen or the lawmakers be able to pass laws that will help the homeowner. Well, you understand when the government tells you we're about to help you, you better understand what's getting ready to happen. I was reading over it, and I was looking at things I never saw them even begin to inquire about. They wanted to know, you know, what, what, what is your mortgage interest? What is this that you pay? What is that that you pay? This is, this is only the beginning of the intrusion into our lives, and it's not designed to help us. You better believe, and I'm telling you very well, and say, remember, you heard it. It is designed to try to know as much about us to enslave us. Now, I'm going to talk real plain to you. I'm sure that some of you saw also that it was revealed that the IRS had a secret agenda since 2011, persecuting those that they would call Tea Party affiliates in order to try to hammer them concerning 501c3 designations so that they could be a watchdog. Now, anytime the government has to come out publicly and apologize in public, they ain't telling you half of what they've been doing. Are y'all here with me today? You say, well, Brother Jerry, do you think it's wise to be talking that way in church concerning these things? Well, where else are you going to get the truth? And men of God, men of God, women of God can't be afraid of the attack of the enemy and stay silent. If the church stays silent, there's no voice. Now, I know what people tell me all the time, and I'm in an area where I'm located right now, where right now there's a lot of activity to try to statistically find the pockets of poverty. Now, as I have told the people many times before, when the government is trying to statistically find the pockets of poverty, it is simply because they can't draw funds on money unless they have statistical proof of areas that are in drastic poverty. So there are certain areas that the government has to insist on staying in poverty in order to substantiate their statistics to get the money that they want 
so that they can waste it even more. Hello, lights. There was, uh, I, I got an invitation to come to a, uh, to come to a hearing for CDBG money. For some of you who don't know what that is, that's Community Development Block Grant money. And they were talking about all the money they were going to give and all the money that they were going to do and so forth and so on. And I called and I told them, I said, the $100 million empowerment zone money that y'all facilitated in the area, I said, did you know that of, of that $100 million that you circulated over these last maybe 10 years, did you know that the area had not got any better, but it got worse? Hello. You say, well, Brother Upton, what are you saying? I'm saying this. The government is not equipped nor anointed to do for us what we can do for ourselves. I am breaking a mindset, a mentality in inner city areas that this, this grab for entitlement and also this grab for somebody to help me is not helping you at all. It is a plantation slavery that is disguised as a check. Hello. So when you go in to break this spirit, many times the spirits that stay over it and hover, hover over it fight you with everything that it can to keep you out. Because once a person sees that through the power of Christ, your life can change in every area, spirit, soul, and body. And you and I, you and I are right now in the most crucial place that we've ever been as believers. Praise God. Are you ready? Are you ready for these days? Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said, are you ready for these days? These are great days. Praise God. I tell people, I said, we're not running. We're going to be strong in the Lord. Say that with me. Strong in the Lord. Now, I want to go to Ephesians 6 and just share a word of exhortation to build you up, to position you for this time, for this hour that we're in. How many of y'all know that our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds? Communities are now crying out for the church rather than for some type of government help because they realize that it can't do what the church can do. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to verse 10. Are you there? Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, after now, now the Apostle Paul is actually declaring with this first word, finally, with everything that I've told you all the way from chapter one through this chapter, he gets down to his closing. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Can you say that with me? Be strong. Turn to the person beside you and tell them, be strong. Now, this is not just to put an ending on something. Paul's about to give us a revelation of a spiritual warfare that you and I are in, that it would be best that we understand what he's going to teach us. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I like what it says in the Amplified in verse 11. It says, put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able successively to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Now look what he says in verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But how many of y'all know that we are in a battle? There's people that tell me, well, the battle, the ba there is no battle for the believer. How many of y'all know that ain't true? Y'all didn't know that? Yeah. <laughs> there is a battle, praise God. And you and I have been anointed by God to face this battle now like never before. My father's house, God has positioned you in this community to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And not only has he positioned you in this house, but how many of y'all know that he's positioned you outside these four walls? 
And he is giving you an exciting, I am excited about what he's calling you to do. He's giving you an exciting call to take this anointing to the streets of this city. Amen. Hallelujah. No one can touch this city like the anointed vessels of Almighty God. Now, what, that's, what that means is because we are going to be strong in the Lord. You don't need armor to sit at home and watch TV. Amen. Hello. No, no soldier goes through boot camp and goes and gets all of his material, his armor, his guns, his whatever it might be. How many of y'all know that you don't get that to go home and sit on the couch? You get armed to go what? In the battle. I said you get armed to go in the battle. And uh, right here at this church, through the ministry gifts that you have here, you have been equipped to go into the battle. Amen. Now that battle, that battle is many times uh, not just an event that we have, but it's even at your workplace. Yes. So here's what the apostle tells us. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So how I many of you understand that you and I are not the enemy, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So how many of you know that there is an organized army of darkness around us that you and I have been anointed to destroy and to pull down by the power of God? Over this region, how many of you understand that there are demonic forces that have hindered the moving of the Spirit of God? But you know what you can thank God? God has set my Father's house right over here on this street to destroy and to pull down those strongholds. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I was, I was, when I was uh, praying about several areas that God is sending us in, the Lord began to tell me about discerning the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world. I understand this is globally, but this is also locally. There are demonic forces that, that actually take up headquarters over cities, over areas. And I just want to send an exhortation out to you, my father's house, is to begin to ask God for his discernment on what is trying to hold this region in captivity. Amen. Hello. And how many of you know that you have a corporate anointing to do battle against those forces? Hallelujah. Sometimes people say, well, you know, uh, people are just what they are. But I have gone into several areas, and one of the first things that I want to do, and one of the first things that I want to know, what actually is controlling this area? What actually are we battling against? Because there are times that you can do everything you know spiritually, everything. You can sow, you can plant, you can water, you can pray and pray. Is there anybody that has ever come up against, man, we've done everything we know. What is holding back the move that we so desire God to bring? Have you, have you ever prayed that way? Have you ever thought, well, you know, uh, we're teaching, we're preaching, we're doing this, we're doing that. Praise God. What is locking this area down? What is locking the people down in Loudoun County? What is locking them down? Because the Bible says that those forces that are trying to hold an area in battle, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, once we begin to discern them and once we begin to use the weapons of God against them, we begin to see people's lives begin to change. Did you know that there are even ruling operations that will even try to rule your home? Hello, church. Not only will they try to rule your home, there are actually, and I know some people don't believe this, but, but I've, been, I've, been, I've been in this so long, I know it's this way. 
There are also generational spirits that hold on to whole families. Hello. And that, and that follow people around from one decade, one generation to another generation. And then all of a sudden, God saves somebody in that family. And when he saves somebody in that family, have you ever seen this? Then he goes through the whole family, setting all of them free. You know what? He found the vessel that he could flow through to begin to release his authority to break those forces off that family. If it will happen over a family, it will also happen over a city. Who wants to see it happen in Loudoun County? Hallelujah. Now, you say, well, what does that have to do with us being strong? There's going to be tendencies at time for you and I to be in this battle and to uh, grow weary in our flesh of doing the battle or the warfare that God has called us to do. You and I, during those times, I've got to find out how to stay strong. Amen. I preached on something this morning. I preached on the fullness of joy. If there's one thing that I'm seeing God's people need right now, is the joy of the Lord. Amen. In the book of Nehemiah chapter 8, as you read through verses 9 through 10, he gets down to a place and he says at the end of the verse that the joy of the Lord is the strength of his people. How many, and, and, and what I told them this morning, and boy, they pulled in, they got it. I told them that church is like a filling station. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. And how many of y'all know that if you're driving your car, for example, if you're driving your car and it gets close to empty, how many of y'all know that's no sign that the car is no good? Right. How many of y'all know that's no sign that the car is about to tear up? Right. How many of y'all know that's no sign that the engine is having trouble? How I many of y'all know that's a sign that you need to pull into a filling station? Yes, Come on, somebody. Yes, How many of you sometimes spiritually feel like you may be running toward empty? Yes. Thank God you got my father's house. You can pull into the filling station. Yes. I told the people this morning, when you pull into the filling station, you don't pull into it to fill up my tank. You fill into it to fill up your tank. And what you got to go ahead and establish in your heart is that if nobody gets any fuel in their tank when they come to church, I'm going to get mine. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to stay full of the joy of the Lord. We're in a time right now where joy is not an option. The enemy comes and he attacks our homes. He attacks our lives. He attacks our families. He attacks our minds. He attacks our emotion. And in the midst of all of that attack, many believers have lost their joy. Anybody ready to get it back? He says, wherefore, because of this, take unto you the whole armor of God. Say the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, what does it say? Stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, where, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. One of the things that I want to I say before I read the rest of this is that we're not in an optional position to wear half the armor. You're going to have to put on the whole armor of God. Is that right? So in putting on the whole armor of God, how many of you know that, yes, God has saved you, but yes, this is a fighting battle. We are fighting the good fight of faith. And I'm going to give you all a little, little heads up. Satan does not fight fire. Hello. Amen. He doesn't knock on your door and says, okay, you're ready for the fight. He uses any kind of uh, illusion, any kind of a masquerade in order to fight. Did you know that we have many people sitting in our pews every time that we come to church that are this close, and that's just about a half of an inch of giving up? They don't look like they are. They don't even act like they are, but inside their soul, inside their emotions, inside their hearts, 
They're close to giving up. God told me this. He said, son, as the days come closer toward the end, the battle will grow more severe. It will be in, it will be necessary for my children to know how to stay strong in me and in the power of my might. It is not a time now for us to retreat because the difficulties face us. Man, this is a time now. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm praying that God begin, and I believe I, I saw about three or four of them uh, Friday night. I'm praying for God to send in an infusion of young men, young men Amen. who got strength, who got zeal, who got, who got, who, who they may not know as many scriptures as we do, but who are on fire for God. Amen. I talked to a young man on Friday night and he was telling me, he said, praise God, I want to get in that covenant that you was talking about. So, okay. He said, I want to do some fasting too. Young man couldn't be no more 19, 20 years old. I said, well, praise God. He said, matter of fact, he said, I'd like to kind of hang around with you just, to, just, just so I could grow. I believe that God is going to give us an infusion of young men that have zeal, that have an anointing to learn. And thanks of God, you know what we're going to have to do with the baton sometime? We're going to have to be willing to pass the baton. Amen. You know, one of the difficulties we got we want to teach them and teach them and teach them and teach them. And then when it's time for them to run with the baton, we want to micromanage everything that they do. And here's what God told me is I send these young men to you, prepare them. Because you know what? They have got all kinds of energy already. Hello, church. Praise God. So I see, a, I tell you what I see. I see on the horizon an army of young men and young women that are coming into the kingdom of God. And I believe that God has called us that are older to train them for this last day's conflict and then release them to carry the anointing of God. You got them right here at Honey, at, at, at Honey Rock and my father's house. We have been blessed for God to send us an army of young people that have a heart to try to go toward God. What do we do? We encourage them. Glory to God. I, uh, I'll, I'll use this. I'm sure that they don't mind. Praise God. I know that my brother, Pastor David, I got some other brothers, Pastor Hugh, Pastor David. We're still running. Amen. We're still doing what God has told us to do. But thank God, God is sending help. I say, thank God, God is sending help. And you know what you do in a, in a relay? Any of y'all ran, ran track? Okay. Well, I did. And in a ra relay, when the baton is handed off to you, it is very important that, number one, you put it in place. You make sure that you get it in place. And then you don't stand on the track talking about how you're going to run. The runner got to take off. You don't have time now to teach you. Well, you remember that curb down there. The runner takes the baton, and how many of y'all know he's gone? And in the process of this, God is sending us now young men and young women that God is teaching us to teach them to carry this last day's anointing. They're going to flood our churches. I'm seeing it already. They're going to flood our churches. They are, there, is, there has been, especially in the, in the inner city, young man uh, saw me the other day. And he gave, me a, he gave me a CD. And he said, he, he warned me when he gave it to me. And he said, man, this CD is off chain, bro. He said, now, now when it starts, he said, you're going to be ready. And I, I said, what do you mean? He said, it ain't religious. He said, but boy, they are preaching the word. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of I'm used to it because I, I listen to a lot of that. Well, I put it in, I put it in uh, my uh, CD player. Oh, my, did they start preaching. But I tell you what they didn't. They didn't have the disguise of religion around it. I mean, they was going straight at it with it. And they was going, and I, I, I decided to try something out. I went down in the project area, and I, I go to a, to a place to minister, and I drove up to a place, and I just parked the car, and I let the CD go. I just let it go. And, man, it, the bass was pumping, and it was going. Within 15 minutes, I hit about 10 young men around the car. Hallelujah. Now, my chains are gone. 
That's, that blessed me. Praise God. I don't know how far that would have took them that day. But I know, I know this. When they heard this, about 10, 15 guys ran my car. And all I had to do is get out of my car. And then I said, what do y'all think about that? They said, man, that's bad, man. Who is that? And I started telling them who it was. And when I started telling them who it was, I said, now listen to what he's saying. And he was preaching about how he used to be in thug life. And God brought him out of thug life into Christ life. And when he got into Christ life, he got into power life. And when he got into power life, he was out of dope life. And when he got out of dope life, he was out of bondage life. And he was preaching and preaching, just like you do, Jerry, when you drop them lyrics like that. And, and as he was preaching, they were sitting there listening. They said, man, what kind, what, what kind of music is this? And guess what? I had my audience to preach to. Now, saints of God, God now is positioning us to be able to reach people that would never come to our churches. Oh, but when he fills them with the power of God. And we've got to allow them to begin to come and bring an anointing that they have coming out of their spirit. Can you say amen? Amen. Paul in his teaching right here about having on the whole armor of God is not teaching it from a religious standpoint. He says here in verse 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now I, I missed a verse. I want to go back up and get it. Because what he says in verse 14, have your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of what? Say it again. So how many of y'all know we need righteousness? We need to understand our righteousness. We need to be in the truth of God's word. We need to have the gospel of peace upon our feet. And how many of y'all know the gospel of peace on your feet is so that you can take the gospel to those who don't know about Jesus and share the power of God with them? I'm ready for an army of soul winners. They told me yesterday they went out to win souls and just a very small crowd went out to win souls with them. I'm ready for this young army to come now so that we can equip them with the anointing of God. Send them out into Loudoun County. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Once, once we get them filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, you ain't got to tell them to go. They're all about going anyway. They've been going all the time. And now they're going to go in a different, different direction. And thank God. Hallelujah. Are we ready for the army that's about to explode inside the church? Huh? I said, are we ready for the army that is about to explode inside the church? What if it don't sound like us? What if it don't look like us? What if it don't dress like us? What if it don't dance like us? What if it don't leap like us? What if it don't talk like us? Are we still ready for the army that God is ready to anoint and send inside his church? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got my granddaughter in my car one day, and we was, we, she wanted to listen to some music. I said, I want you to listen to the CD I got. It was a CD by Lecrae. Lecrae is one of the uh, Christian rappers one of the, probably the nas- national known Christian rappers. She said, she said, Granddaddy, I don't want to listen to that. I said, yeah, I said, I said yeah, yeah, we're we going to listen to this a little bit. I said, yeah, I just hold on. And, and, and she said, I want to listen to something else. I said, hold up, we're going to listen to this. So I, I, I slid Lecrae in there. Oh, boy. And then we, I listened, he was, he was, he was, oh, he was breaking it down. And when we got down about five minutes, I said, well, okay, I'll just take it out. She said, no, don't take that out. She said, I want to hear that. Let me help you understand. I am prepared for an army to come forth who flows in the anointing that God has placed on them. Hallelujah. What that's going to require? That's going to require some of us giving up ownership. Praise the Lord. It's easier said than done. What happens? Praise God. When we're in an event, we're getting ready to have an outside crusade. I told y'all that I'm going to get ready, I'm going to have a tent this summer on the parking lot, have an outside crusade. And I'm not fishing for Christians. 
Hello. I said, I'm not fishing for Christians. Am I going to need some Christians to help me? You have to put the tent up and you have to watch the parking lot. Amen. But I'm fishing for sinners. Amen. How many of y'all understand that when you go fishing, you use different kinds of bait? Yes, Hello. So I've got some bait already diagnosed and already ready. Hallelujah. And uh, it might not fit very well in what we call organized in our churches, but I hear something that God is telling me. God is telling me that the avenue of music that Satan stole and perverted and twisted and turned it around, that God is taking it back and he is turning it back around for his glory and for his praise, for his honor and for him to be exalted. He said, and son, as I take it back out of the hands of the enemy, you've got to release these rappers, these singers, these dancers, hallelujah, to be able to flow like I have called them to flow. Are y'all ready? Are you ready, my father's house? He said, what's this got to be doing strong in the Lord? I'm telling you now that God is giving us keys to our cities. And then he goes on. I read those other ones. I want to go to verse 18. Then I want to go to one other place. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now what is this all for, Paul? And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth. How? Say it good. Say it with some power. Boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. Paul said he was praying for an anointing where he could boldly proclaim the mysteries of the gospel. Hallelujah. Jerry, one of my, one of my men here who is God is blessing. God has given him a unique way of being able to to bring forth, I'm, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not uh, just rhymes. They are messages. He, he did one, we was having sermon presentation in the school yesterday, and uh, Jerry wrapped his, praise God. And I mean, he dropped it, boy. He covered the whole country. He covered, he covered the whole administration. He covered the whole area. He covered the exposing of it. And then it landed. And that's some Lord spoke this to me. He said, son, he said, I've got thousands of juries just like this right here. He said, he said, but he said, but they felt like that they were not welcome in the church. He said, but now I'm moving that lying spirit. He said, and now I'm bringing them forth. He said, and I want you to lay hands on them, and I want you to release them to flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Release them to flow. Glory to God. Now, I want you to turn with me, if you would. Turn over to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Are y'all still here with me? Do you know there's an army coming? Do you know that we're going to release them to flow? Praise God. Hallelujah. You know what? If we really are doing our job as the fivefold ministry, there will be less and less need for us. Y'all didn't like that, did you? Well, <laughs> if we're doing our job as the fivefold ministry, now listen to what we do. It says, and he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. For what? The work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So the fivefold ministry is anointed to bring the saints in maturity to release them to do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. And I don't know if you know this, but in this day and hour that you and I are living in, you're blessed too right here at my father's house. Because you know what? You get, you get, really, you get to be exposed to different ministry gifts to teach you and to instruct you. But we're getting ready to see people who have never gone forth in any ministry whatsoever. They're getting ready to go forth doing the work of the ministry. Somebody will say amen. They're going to do it in places that we never could go. They're going to do it in ways we never would do it. Hallelujah. 
creativity is getting ready to come into people's spirit. And they're going to begin to carry, I feel prophecy, they're going to begin to carry this anointing in places that we have never been able to reach before. God is going to ordain it. And then you're going to, you're going to look up one day, Pastor David, Pastor Hugh, you're going to look up one day, and then there's going to be people that are packed all over those balconies standing up against the walls because the saints have been doing the work of the ministry. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. In James chapter 5, let me, let me share this with you. Praise God. James chapter 5. And I, and I want you to hear the power of God that is in this because I believe that you and I are coming into the days of of an Elijah anointing. Does anybody believe that beside me? Let me see if anybody in here believe that beside me. I believe that. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here somewhere. Let me, let me go in here. All right, James chapter 5. Let me start in verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth. And hath long patience for it until he receives the early and latter rain. Say early and latter rain. I won't give you a prayer because I want you to pray for the early and the latter rain to begin to fall on Loudoun County. I want you to begin to pray for the early and the latter rain to fall on Loudoun County. What do you get when the rains hit in the natural? You get a harvest. Is there anybody here want to see a harvest come forth in Loudoun County? Hallelujah. Anybody believe that God can do that kind of thing? Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draw it nigh. Does anybody, you see, even in their day, they believed the coming of the Lord was close. Amen. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endured. You have heard of the patience of Job, have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercies. But, but above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? What does it say? Let him pray. Is any merry? What does he do? Sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. Now I'm talking about how do we stay strong in the Lord? And I believe that you have to be a very, very discerning who to confess your faults to. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all know that you can't tell everybody about your faults? Amen, Amen lights. Amen. So how many of y'all know that if by the time you get back to church next week, everybody in church knows about your faults? Amen. So how many of y'all know you need to be able to discern those that you can trust? But then it says, confess your faults one to another. Now, you've got to have people that you believe that you can have accountability with. Accountability is a position of staying strong in the Lord. You've got to have people that you have the ability to talk to. It is crucial. Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What else keeps us strong in the Lord? Effectual fervent prayer. Now I learned something about how do you, how do you get to fervent prayer? Let me tell you one of the quickest way to get fervent prayer going in your life. Get in fervent trouble. <laughs> I mean, y'all know that prayer becomes passionate when you got problems. Oh, y'all might as well say amen. And how many y'all know when the trouble gets thick? How many y'all know there ain't no need for no motivation for me to pray that that's all I got? Factual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. I, I had a word come prophecy. Somebody gave me this week, talked about that the anointing, the, uh, the Elijah anointing is 
coming back upon the remnant of God. And it was not coming back just because of the miracles, but it was coming back to provide demonstration concerning those who belong to God and those that don't. How many of y'all remember that, what, he, what happened with Elijah when he called the fire down? And how many of y'all know that the fire fell? Now, in this last days that you and I are in, you and I are called by God to expose the works of darkness, and I believe that God's going to give us an Elijah anointing to release that power. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And how many of y'all know that Elijah was under an old covenant? Hello? So how many of y'all know that whatever he could get done under the old covenant, how many of y'all know that we can get even more under the new covenant? This ain't a time for us to say, well, well, boy, I wish he was here today. Oh, there's more than that. Jesus came and anointed us and gave us the power of the almighty God. And what he could do under the old covenant can't compare with what we can flow in with the anointing of God under the new covenant. Saints of God, it is time for us to position ourselves to flow in a greater anointing than we've ever flown before. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. He prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. I had, a, I had the prophecy I was talking to you about, and the, the brother was sharing with me, how, how many of y'all been noticing all the rain we've been getting Amen. in the natural? He said that God spoke to him and told him that it was a, it was a, the natural was a spiritual reflection of what was gathering in the heavenlies right now for the body of Christ. He said, he said, have you noticed something? He said that the more it rains, he says, the more it comes even more and more and more. I'm here to tell you, I believe that prophecy because at the end of it, he was telling me, he said, brother Jerry, we've been praying for the rain of God to fall, for the glory of God to come. He said, once it comes, people better be ready because it ain't just going to be a little drip at church time. It ain't going to be a little bit for an hour. It ain't going to be uh, for two hours. It's going to rain and rain and rain and rain and rain and rain and the glory of God is going to be upon us so thick, hallelujah, that it's going to be like we are saturated by it. Glory. I believe that prophecy. I believe it's going to take place. And I don't just believe it's going to rain just in, just in, the, uh, just in certain areas. I believe that there's a rain of increase of finances that's coming upon us if we would just receive it. I believe that God is saying, uh, you've stood uh, and with little, and now I am about to release my rain of increase and abundance to come upon my body, to come upon my church greater than ever before. Amen. Nobody don't want that rain, Lord, here am I. Nobody don't want that rain, Lord, give it all to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he says, he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Hallelujah. I got, a, I, got, I got something to say. There are people I know that uh, at Honey Rock and also I know at my father's house that for a season have maybe backed away from the things of God and maybe have backed away because of whatever took place. But thanks to God, God is positioning you and I right now Amen. with an anointing. Yes. They're coming back. I said they're coming back. Hallelujah. And as they come back, you guess what they're going to find at my father's house? All in wine. Hallelujah. I said all in wine. Amen. Because as we are strong in the Lord, it's not just for us. It's not just for us. God wants us to be strong. One closing scripture. Turn to Psalm 23, and I will close with this one. Praise God. God doesn't want us just to be strong for ourselves. He wants us to be strong for those who need the oil and the wine. 
Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Is anybody excited about the time you're in? Amen. Are you really excited about the time you're in? Yeah. Get up in the morning and praise God. Another day. Glorify the Lord. Another day. Praise his name. You feel like that? Amen. Glory to God. Psalm 23. Hallelujah. Lord is my shepherd, verse 1, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. Now he's working on me. He's working on me. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Anybody in here God been working on lately? Bringing you to the end of yourself. Showing you all the areas that have to change. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with all. What happens then? You know why your cup run it over? It ain't just for you. It's for somebody who needs that all that is in a bad situation. He anoints you with all. Your cup runs over to be able to touch somebody else's life. Anybody in the church that I got an overflowing cup? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'll read the last one. Surely goodness and mercy shall do what? Look behind you. I want you to just look over your shoulder. What's following you tonight? I said, what's following you tonight? Come on. What's following you tonight? What's following my father's house? What's following Honey Rock? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow, you got to make it personal, me, all the days of my life. And don't forget the last part. And what? Can't nothing get me out of God's house. I was glad when they said unto me, what? You know, right now, I, 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 I see people from time to time. I've, I've, had, I've had about four this week, matter of fact. I've had about four see me and say, Brother Jerry, uh, I ain't been coming to church lately. And I said, I hate to tell you what, what really, I, 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 uh, <laughs> I, I didn't really even know they hadn't, but they, they, they said, I ain't been coming to church lately. I said, really? I said, why? They said, oh, I just let the devil mess with my mind. I said, well, well how you doing? They said, terrible. I said, well, you know what? I said, you all come on back. To, oh, I'm coming back church Sunday. I'm coming back church Sunday. I said, well, it's one good thing about it is. I said, praise God. The only person that moved away from the church was you. Church ain't moved. I said, now we done relocated down the street. I said, but church is waiting on you. Let me help you all, son. Let me help you all, son. I don't care what happens. I don't care who you get mad at. I don't care who get on your nerves. I don't care whose feet you step on. Stay in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's sometimes people say, well, I'm just not getting anything. Well, here's what I got for you. Praise God. Come next week, give him something. Get out, get out of the get and get in to give. How many of y'all glad for the house of the Lord? Huh? How many of you ever walked into the church feeling bad and just somebody smiled at you? Somebody spoke to you. Then all of a sudden, it was like a weight lifted off your shoulders. Can't nothing get me out of God's house. I tell you what, I made a mistake one time, got mad at a whole bunch of people. A whole bunch of people. I was mad at every Christian I could think of. And every Christian wouldn't have Christian. I was mad at them too. So I said, I ain't going to church nowhere. I thought I was punishing them. I ain't going to church. I ain't preaching either. I ain't going to church, ain't preaching, ain't doing none of that. I was tormented. Because, I'm going to tell y'all why. Because if you really are God's, you're going to have to be around your family. See, God didn't make you to be able to be strong in him 
without your brothers and sisters. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. And sometimes the most annoying brother and sister that annoys you and gets on your nerves the most is the greatest blessing God ever sent you. <laughs> if you can't say amen, you can say oh me. I ain't learned this hard way. Sometimes that person that frustrates me so, so much, I know none of y'all ain't never been there before, brings out from me what the persons or the people who really that I love don't bring out. I find that I still got some anger down there. You know what I mean? Because that person right there brings it out. Sometimes it ain't nothing so much that they said, it's just when they open their mouth. <laughs> Brother Upton, you all have not said that. But do you know what I found out? That they belong to God. That's still my sister. And that's still my brother. And you and I better might as well get used to living together now. Amen. We're going to be together for eternity. Amen. See, I'm going to ask God for a house far away from some of these people. <laughs> I mean, y'all know you can't tell God where to put you. Amen? Amen? God places you where he deems necessary. Yeah. But whatever you do to stay strong in the Lord, stay in God's house. Stay in the house of God. Don't let nobody run you off. Glory. Will, will there be times that you'll feel like running off? Will there be times that you'll feel like staying at home? And can I hit something? You can't get from TV. Well, Brother Upton, I got me a, I got me, I, I go to service. Uh, with, with Lakewood, I, I, I'm, I'm a part of their congregation from the house. No, you are not. You are sitting at home watching TV, and that's good. TV ministry is great, but it doesn't replace the house of God. Being strong in the Lord means you got to be connected. First Corinthians chapter 12 says, though we be many members, we're still yet one body. One body. Now, here's a good thing about one body. Whatever I can't handle, me and Brother David together got more strength. Amen. Then me, Brother David, and Richard have got even more strength. Amen. Then me and Brother David and Richard and Harold yeah. and Bruce yeah. have got even more strength. Amen. And then we pick up Brother Hugh and Brother Jerry, Sister Petey, we got even more strength. Where do you find this kind of anointing to stay strong in the house of God? Well, I hear the Lord saying, somebody was even contemplating about beginning to drift away. And God just, you remember them westerns when they be riding a horse and getting ready to rope one of the cow? He done roped you back. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right, buddy. Amen. He done roped you back. Me being strong in the Lord, I, thought, I, I, I was convinced. I told myself one day, you got plenty of scriptures. You know the word. Stay away from them, people. Stay away from them. You got the word. You got tapes. You got praise music. Stay away from them. And here's where I learned something. God won't let you grow to the potential of your growth in him without the rest of the body of Christ. It's not just because you need them. It's also because they need you. How many of you going to stay strong in the Lord? Hallelujah. I say, how many are going to stay strong in the Lord? Glory to God. Thank God right here. I want you to see this as an oasis. Glory to God. You get in that parking lot out there, praise God. Hallelujah. 
I can't get, I can't, I can't wait to get in here and hear what the Lord going to say today. Well, what, what, what would that be like? We had people that park in their car and just walking real fast, getting to church. Hallelujah, man. Boy, I can't wait to get in that praise service. I've been going through a hard place all week. I can't wait to begin to praise God in the house of God. See, when we talk about being strong in the Lord, many times we violate one of the greatest principles, and that is the assembly that God has planted us in. And you know one of the things that will help you? My mother had a principle at our house, is no matter how mad you got at the house, you still had to respect it. Right. Now, she wasn't asking you to respect it. She was demanding that you respect it. And she would let you know. She would let you know, okay, everything ain't right here all the time, but this is still your house. You know what? You know one of the, one of the worst testimonies I've ever seen it's for people that are a part of a house that all they can do is criticize it, put it down, talk negative against it, speak against it for people who may be even searching for a church home. You know, one of the greatest testimonies that comes out of the church is not for you telling people how bad things are here. It's for you to tell them how God changed your life here. Because some people forget that you wouldn't all that when you came. Oh, you was, huh? Oh, oh. But there's strength in the house of God. Here's my prayer tonight. I want you to stand with me just for a minute. Just stand. I want to pray this. Here's my, here's my prayer tonight. My prayer tonight is that we would be strong in the Lord by staying connected one to another. I said by staying connected one to another. Can you say amen to that? I said by staying connected one to another. I won't let a lying spirit, I won't let a, I won't let a manipulative spirit, I won't let divination, I won't let anything that the enemy tries to speak in my ears to separate me from my brothers and sisters. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Then I want you to lift your hands up before the Lord, and I want you to thank him that you're a part of this house. Or what house you're a part of, I want you to thank him you're a, a part of that house, and that you value that house, that you love that house that you stand with that house, that you stand with your brothers and your sisters, that you support that house, that you speak well of your brothers, speak well of your sister, that you speak well of those that are with you in this vineyard, and that you honor them, hallelujah, as your brother and your sister. I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Now, Father, I pray for my father's house, Honey Rock. I pray, dear Lord God, uh, that you would just connect us even stronger than ever before, Lord God. I pray that your anointing uh, would just be a source of strength. And Lord God, that we would stand for one another. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I praise you, Lord. And I bless you. In Jesus' name. Church said, Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to have you do some. Turn to your brother, your sister beside you there. Hallelujah. I want you to tell them you are my brother or my sister. We're one body in the name of Jesus. And we are strong in the Lord and the power of his might in the name of Jesus.